So recently, I've had a weird fascination. I don't know if it's a weird fascination, but a fascination around books that have to do with octopuses. And so this is another book in that theme that we're going to talk about today, and it's called The Mountain and the Sea by Ray Naylor. And this is a book about this colony of octopuses that is found and they have their own culture and language and so the thing is will they be able to preserve this and keep the outside world from coming in and destroying it so the book is kind of around that but it also focuses on things such as consciousness and what makes us us and all these different things and it was very sad and emotional and there's just really a lot going on and the story kind of bounces between all these different characters so there's this place called Kandao and there's this archipelago that ends up being taken over by this corporation called Dianima this is where these octopuses have been found and it seems like this corporation wants to study the octopuses and learn about them and this that and the other and there's this scientist Dr. Ha Win who comes over there and takes part and she wrote a book all about like a theoretical kind of thing that if octopuses did create their own language and culture like how it would kind of go so they reached out to her and she's gonna come work on this island and basically try to communicate with these octopuses and see if this is a real thing like she doesn't even quite believe that it is but she's very curious to see what's going on there and so she comes to this island and on the island is also these two other people you can call them people one of them is Evrim who is an android, and the other is Alton Setseg. I'm not sure how to say her name. She kind of oversees all the security of the island and making sure no one breaches and comes through and you know, attacks them or tries to like come in the waters and harm any of the octopuses and whatnot. Because there's all these other people that seem to want to come in and harm them and take everything away. So it's this kind of like tumultuous story about what's happening and there's these other ships that are like ocean trawlers that go out and you know and they trawl the sea floor and they uh have this weird thing where people who work on them are basically slaves that were captured and sold into slavery that have to work these ships and process this fish and whatnot that also plays into the story. I don't want to say too much about that because I don't want to give away too many things. But the whole themes and stuff of the story was really emotional and moving and just the whole like the consciousness of self like what makes us us what makes the octopuses them and like how would you bridge that communication between different species like how you know like a human like if we could talk to dogs or something you know how would you how would you figure out what they're like what does this wolf mean you know like something in those lines and it was really fascinating to see it play out in this book like the theoreticals you know it's it's a sci-fi book but it was so touching and like quietly beautiful in the way it was written and the the themes and the concepts that it explored and so before you go into like some of the chapters you have these like little passages that are taken from the books that Dr. Ha Win wrote or also this other woman who's like the head of Dianima. Dianima? Dianima? I'm not quite sure how to say it. Dr. Minerva Doser Chen. She's the head of this place and she also wrote a book. She created Evram the android. Evram is kind of banished to the archipelago to help with the learning of these octopuses because society kind of freaked out about this android being maybe a little too human and this that and the other. So you have this element to the story and that comes into the whole thing of like what makes self self and what makes someone human or an entity like is it language is it this is it the consciousness so there was a quote that I really thought was cool which was from one of the fictional books that Dr. Wynn wrote and it said we came from the ocean and we only survive by carrying salt water with us all our lives and our blood and our cells the sea is our true home this is why we find the shore so calming we stand where the waves break like exiles returning home and for me, whenever I'm near the water, I've always felt like it was home. I claim water is my favorite element, because it truly is. And it's funny, I have, I have so much art that is just like, m water features into it. So I just have like a, a very, like an affinity for that. So that's probably why I'm drawn to reading books that have to do with like, <laughs> sailing on the seas, or creatures of the seas, or horror of the seas. I find underwater and the ocean and water just like a fascinating subject and you know as, as I just said being by the shore of the ocean or lake it feels like home and so that quote kind of spoke to me. The whole thing through the story is will they be able to communicate with these octopuses? Do they actually have a culture and community and language? 
Will the outside world come in and destroy all this? What makes us us? What is consciousness? The writing was fantastic. It is a little uh, lumpy, <laughs> lumpy, bumpy when you are switching back and forth between the different characters that are in the book because there's some different weird stuff that's happening. So that could be a little bit maybe off-putting to some people. Maybe it did take a little bit of getting used to, but I absolutely love the book. I think I love most about it, like just the concepts of it, like the thought-provoking topics that really kind of spoke to me. Obviously, I like that it was about creatures of the ocean. I've always found octopuses really fascinating with how smart they are and just they're such a strange, strange creature. This author has another book coming out very soon or it is out or just came out. I would like to check out and see what the next book that they wrote is all about because I really enjoyed this one. So if you like sci-fi with underwater creatures with some really moving and interesting topics that kind of like touch a little bit deeper below the surface, The Mountain and the Sea by Ray Naylor might just be for you. And if you are a fan of books that have to do with watery environments, the next book coming up will have to do with that. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.